The Quran is the words of Allah speaking primarily about himself. It's a message to humans. So in the Quran, and that's probably like one of the most accurate ways to look at the Quran, Allah is telling us about himself. And that's all what we humans really need. Guidance, comfort, peace, goodness, virtue, everything positive in life has divine origins. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that is helpful, everything that is necessary for human nature to evolve, to grow, to mature, to reach its heights, comes from divine origins. Because in a sense, goodness and divinity are synonymous. So in existence, good does not have an independent existence. In the sense, there is no background to what good really is. What good really is, is the divine names and attributes coming to the creation. Allah is the source of all good. That's what good really is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is giving us the source of goodness, the source of all goodness. Knowing Allah is not a luxury. Relating to Allah is not a luxury. Learning about the names and attributes of Allah is not a luxury and it's not merely an intellectual endeavor. It's not like I learn the names of Allah, what their meaning is, I learn the linguistic meaning, then yeah, I can talk about that. That's not what learning about Allah is. It is part of the process, but the reality of learning about Allah is experiencing Allah in your life, is experiencing the names and attributes of Allah in your personal life. It's a first-hand experience. The problem is we limit our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ideas, to words. But the reality is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not primarily go through or does not happen through our thoughts, our minds or our words. It actually goes through our hearts. There's a very interesting quote from Ibn al-Qayyim. He says, between the actions of a human being, whether they are proper actions or speech, and the heart, there is a distance. And the deeds, when they are done, when they are performed, they travel this distance to the heart. And there is a distance between the heart and Allah. The deeds first are supposed to travel from the limbs to the heart, from the heart to Allah. On both these paths or distances, there are bandits, highway robbers. There is the desire of the human being, there is the expectations and the nafs, the ego of the human being. And there is shaitan. Unless the person clears the distance between their actions and their hearts, the hearts or the actions would not reach the heart, and thus they would not reach Allah. And when they reach Allah, obviously that means they are accepted and rewarded. But sometimes the person clears the distance between the actions and the heart, but they don't clear the distance between the heart and Allah. So the actions will actually reach the heart, but they will seek an ascendance to Allah, but they won't find an opening, because the path to Allah is not cleared. So they keep revolving in the heart, but they don't remain in that state for long. If they keep there revolving in the heart, this awakens the nafs, the ego of the human being. Then the nafs jumps on these actions and claims them to itself. And that gives it arrogance and pride. So the person will start to see themselves better than others. I pray, that others don't pray. I give in sadaqah, others don't give in sadaqah. This happens when our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limited to words, is limited to ideas. We can talk about Allah, 
we can write about Allah, we can tell people about Allah, we can read about Allah, but we're not experiencing the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a personal experience. We don't have this inner experience because that exists in the distance between our hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does the Quran give us? The Quran helps us travel this distance. So we engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a personal level. It's a first hand experience. We experience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a person in our life. And this, it's not like any other experience, but it's a first-hand experience. Your heart is literally with Allah. It's in the spiritual proximity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the Quran gives you. And that's the real experience of Tawheed. Because we can talk about Tawheed as theory, but that's just ideas. Allah is not an idea. Allah is a truth. Allah is a reality. Allah is the reality. And if we fail to experience that, and only, if we only resort to second-hand experience through thought, then we're not really experiencing Tawheed. What does the Qur'an give us? It offers, this, it offers us that experience. When, you, when we sometimes feel touched by the Qur'an, we feel it moves our hearts, and we feel maybe a tear rolling down our cheeks and we don't know why it's just because the Quran took us in an in a first hand experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it took our souls to the presence of Allah in reality it's a real experience we cannot see it with our eyes we cannot talk about it or even think about it in the form of thoughts it's just a crude spiritual experience. We have no words to express that or talk about that. That's what the Quran really gives us. This is when the Quran awakens the heart. This is what the scholars call yaqala. This is what the scholars call an awakening. You wake up to the reality of your existence because essentially, as for example, Ibn Taymiyyah says, the reality of the human being is the soul. The body is just a host of the soul. The re your reality is your soul, which is your heart in a sense. And you experience Allah, you, you relate to Allah through your, in your spiritual essence, not in your mental essence, or not in, your ment in the mental layer of your, ex of your existence. You experience Allah in the essence of who you are, a first-hand experience. And reading the Quran properly offers us this experience. So when we engage with the Qur'an, we should read it with an open heart. We should not approach the Qur'an with expectations. We should not approach the Qur'an with preconceived notions. We should let the Qur'an lead the way. These are the words of Allah. Allah, through His own words, takes us on this journey. But we just need to come or approach the Qur'an in a state of complete openness, in a state of humility and in a state of willingness to make ourselves present before the true divine presence. And then when we do that, the Qur'an just does its work. We usually don't allow the Qur'an to do that with all our expectations, with our ambitions. Sometimes I want to recite this right and I want to memorize this. I want to understand what this means. So we get sidetracked by some I would say, lower level ambitions that are good, but they just take from the real experience. And when we experience the Qur'an at that level, we just wake up to the fact or to the truth that knowing Allah, loving Allah, experiencing the presence of Allah and engaging with Him, is what we are created for. It's a realization of Tawheed rather than an internalization of some information. That's truly what the Quran offers us. All the details in the Quran, they are meant to facilitate this and augment it. They are not an end in themselves. They are the means to this beautiful end, to this engagement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
To support the Quran Drive and learn more about it, please visit QuranDrive.com.